the word of God you will receive grace with is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 22. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar. Do I mean that? that a sacrifice offered to an idol is anything, or that an idol is anything. No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God, and I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than Him? Amen. Based on 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 22, I will preach with the title, Restore the right given by the Lord. I hope you receive God's grace. Today's scripture says, the sacrifices of pagans are offered not to God, but to demons. Because they decide themselves to whom they will give sacrifice. So God does not receive it. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than Him? It is an awful word. If you give sacrifices as pagans do, not knowing what to do, they are offered to demons. I will judge it. If you are stronger than me, do it or don't do it. The Lord loves us, so He desperately that tries to prevent us from doing it. If you understand the love of the Lord, please say Amen. Is there anything to worship, fear, give thanks, give praise, and glory in the world? However, we try to find it. There is nothing for that. God made all things according to His pleasing will, for whom does the Lord make them? It was for me. So if I don't breathe air, I will die. If there isn't any sunlight, I will die. If there isn't any soil, I will die. If there isn't any water, I will die. He made everything that we need for our flesh and even made us and gave it to us. You take it, you have it, you conquer it. They are all yours. So we are living by the grace of the Lord now. This is the God-given blessing to humans. However, those who don't know this at all say, When I was born, there was the sun. There was air. There was water. There was food. 
I was there because my father and mother gave birth to me. It just happened somehow. That's the way it goes. Nothing came out from nature by itself. We should know that everything is made by the Creator. Human flesh needs water, food, air, solar energy, and soil. The organs of our body works for the day, but if parts of it doesn't work for a minute, we should die. The Lord, who reigns over everything and gives us blessings in the ups and downs of our life, is worthy of receiving thanks, glorify, and worship. If you understand, please say Amen. The Lord made humans to bless them. He said, not to do this, do this. He wrote it down in the Bible exactly what humans should do or not to do. Why did he do that? It is for humans to receive blessing when they do what they have to do and not to do what they should not do. It is also great grace and love to us. Today, parents who have children will understand this. Children don't listen to their parents. Why? You rascal, why are you doing that? You should study hard and lead your faith life well. Study! Study! Is studying everything in the world? They haven't lived their life much, but talk back to their parents. Is studying everything. Why don't children become great? Father and mother know how their children can grow up great in blessing, so they teach them well what to do, but they don't listen to their parents well. Why? They have no capacity to accept it. They don't discern what is right or wrong. The whole word of God given to us is far greater than what a father and mother want their children to become. So whether it is good for your circumstances or not, whether it is responsible to you or not, if you obey the word of God, there will be blessing for you. If you understand, please say Amen. However, we don't listen to the word. It is sin. People say, I have no sin ethically. I have no sin morally. I have no sin emotionally. I have no sin conscientiously. But if you don't know God, it is sin. If you don't do what the Lord said to do, it is sin. If you do what the Lord said not to do, it is sin. What are the wages of sin? They are poverty, suffering, curses, and death. Your soul will perish and suffer forever in burning hell. Humans do not live once and die away but live forever because we are spiritual beings. Our souls will suffer in hell when we don't live according to the will and word of the Lord 
in our earthly life. Whatever may happen, we must not go to hell. There's the devil's work, which makes us commit sin and disobey the word of God. It also makes us to not give thanks to the Lord, though we live by the things which belong to the Lord. It is not visible. The devil is the specialist who makes us commit sin and have a wrong relationship with the Lord to send us to hell by the wages of sin. We should be the one whom the devil, who is professional in sending us to hell, cannot deceive. If you make up your mind to live like that, please say Amen. If you become that person, you will be blessed. But we don't know God. Humans don't know the grace of the Lord. Then word of God says, do this, don't do this. But we don't know the blessing for life. So we commit sin, and by the wages of sin, we are doomed to perish. We are doomed to be cursed and to die. We will finally go to hell after that. If we die by sin today, we will go to hell. If we die tomorrow, we will go to hell. So the Lord sent His Son, Jesus, to the earth. The day he came to the world is called Holy Birthday. No one born on the earth has been called, born holy. Only Jesus is called who has Holy Birthday. It means that he has no sin. You and I do what the Bible says not to do and don't do what the Lord says to do. Jesus took up our sin from Adam and died, shedding his blood to pay the wages of our sin. Because the wages of sin is death. He's saying, you are sinners. I pay the wages of sin by my blood. You believe this and be free. Though you die, you must not go to hell. You should go to heaven. He gave his life as a ransom for many, and he believed. He says, drink my blood, eat my flesh. It is eternal food and life. Do not reject this great blessing. If you reject it, you should go to hell. What is believing in Jesus? Church going is not believing in Jesus. We should have faith that the word of God will be fulfilled as it is. The Lord sent His only Son because of man's sin, which disobeyed the word of God. The Son died instead of my sin and gave His life as a ransom for many. He saved me from sin, death, and hell. Do not just memorize this, but have this in your heart. Those who have the grace of the Lord say Amen. Who is the one whom I should give thanks in all my life, whom I should serve in all my life, and whom I should wait for in all my life? Who is the one for us to worship, give gratitude, praise, and live for? He's the Lord Jesus Christ. We have received the grace of the Lord. If we try to live by ourselves as we want to do, leaving the Lord, we will be caught by the trap. Someone made money earnestly. He got into the world. He got fame. When he became old, he lost his money, fame, and even his youth. Only that was left for him. However, you and I lost what we have in the world. We should have life. We should have eternal life. 
we should have heaven. What is it? We should have the blood of Jesus who shed blood for us. We should rely on this. How great grace it is. We cannot get it by money or strength. We can receive it by faith. I bless you in the name of the Lord to have it as yours. The Lord grants immeasurable grace upon us, both body and soul. Humans ought to glorify, worship, give thanks, and praise the Lord. But the devil, who is the enemy of God, and man is invisible. He makes humans to not believe in Jesus. He makes us commit sin. He makes people regard Christianity like other religions. The devil is really the enemy of man. He was against the Lord and makes man commit sin to send him to hell. He is not the one whom man should bow down to him, but the one whom man cast out, reject, and make him disgraceful. We should treat him worse always. He tries to deceive man to receive bow from man using all kinds of schemes. Worldly people don't know whom they should serve, and they worship the devil, Satan, and demons work, which steals, kills, and destroys man. Today's scripture says, the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to your parents. The enemy is not the one who should receive bows from us, but the one whom we should cast away. With what reason does the devil receive bow from humans? However, the worldly people surely believe that their parents come and receive their sacrifices. We should know the truth. However, you believe that bread is a rice cake. It is bread. The word of God is the truth. So the word of God says that the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. We should accept that. We should be alert. What does the devil do? He makes men commit sin with the power of death to send him to hell. He makes humans sick, curses, poor, troubled, and quarreling each other. All the unfortunate things are done by the devil, Satan, and demons. We cannot see it with our eyes and don't know who did it. He is worthy to be beaten to death. Then why should we serve him? Say after me, please. It is not enough though we beat him to death. Then why should we bow down to him? They don't know what they are doing. Dear beloved, when God made humans, He made us in the image of God. The Lord endowed us with character and wanted us to live as we were created. The Lord wanted humans to live happily. And as the Lord created all things and rule over them, the Lord gave the right to us to rule over, have, and subduce it. But humans gave up their right and subduced to them, which they should rule over and subduce. How vexing! At the entrance of a village, there was a wood pole written, the great general throughout heaven and earth. People passing by were praying or bowed down to it. Who cut the wood and put it there? When it rained, it was rotten. When it snowed, it was rotten. 
how can the rotten tree give blessing to humans? The Lord gave blessing to humans. We have an intellect, emotion, and will. We can know what is right and wrong with the intellect. And when we are touched that is right with the intellect, then we make up our mind to do it with the will. Then think about whether the tree cut by a man can give blessing to humans. Think about it. When you give sacrifice to the dead one, will they come to eat it? If the dead come to eat food, all the food on the earth will not be enough for them. If those who died from the creation of the earth till now come to eat food, it will not be enough. They know that the dead doesn't eat food. They prepared. Dear beloved, we should not do foolish things. So the Bible says, the sacrifices of pagans are offered not to God, but to demons. The demons are very bad. They make us cursed, commit sin, and send us to hell. It is distressing that he might come into my house, we should cast them away from us. However, he says, I will give you blessing, cut the tree and erect it. You bow down to it. That's what the devil doing. When should restore the character given by the Lord, then we can know and overcome him. How much is our character is out of order? We cut the wood and curve it, then ask blessing and bow down to it, though the Lord said, you use everything, conquer and rule over it. The Lord will ask you, I give you blessing. Does it give you blessing? How vexing. It is a disgrace and shame to the Creator. It is a disgrace to the character. It is foolish behavior that humans are deprived of their all rights given by the Lord. We should return to the Lord to not to be foolish like that. We should realize the grace given by the Lord. We should fix in our mind and conscience that only the Lord gives us grace, blessing, life, eternal life in heaven. Why can't we do like that? Because we have the corrupted character, so we don't know what we are doing. Dear beloved, we must not serve and subduce to the things giving up and devaluating the human's right given by the Lord. What is idolatry? It is making things which have no character in it and cannot give blessing to humans characterized to serve as the one who can bless us. What is an idol? Humans serving what they have made. How vexing! Worshipping idol is betraying the grace of the Lord. So the Lord said, You shall have no other gods before me. All the other gods make you commit sin, destroy and send you to hell. Only God gave you all things and gave His Son when you committed sin and were doomed to go to hell to save you. You shall have the Lord only. He gave you all things in heaven and earth. He is the one who helps you when you have troubles. Your troubles come from the devil, Satan, demons, and sin. God is the one who can help you in the problem. Worship him only. Let him be your God. If you agree with me, please say Amen. Hallelujah. You neglect the Lord and characterize the things which have no character in them. How can they bless you? We cannot understand it. The Creator gave character to humans and gave us everything. The Son gave us grace. We were made to understand and give thanks to the Lord. How did humans' character get out of order 
that we rebel against the Lord. And why do we serve the devil, Satan, and demons that steal, kill, and destroy humans? If you are deceived by the devil, it is like you worship an idol. If you make up your mind not to be deceived by the devil, please say Amen. Hallelujah. The devil said to Jesus, Jesus, are you the Son of God? If you are the Son of God, at least you should have all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, then people will acknowledge that you are the Son of God. Shouldn't you? Yes, it sounds good. Who is the Son of God? He made everything in the world. He rules over the life and death of humans. He created humans. He gave all blessing to us. He shed blood and saved us from sin and death. He opened the way for us not to go to hell, but to live forever in heaven. Please say Amen. Would he want to live with the splendor of the world as the Son of God? He made the world by his word. The devil foolishly asked the Son of God to bow down and worship him, promising to give him the splendor of the world. People cut the head of a pig and bow down to it to ask for a blessing from it. Then the pig's head, which is cut, will say to them with smile, What kind of blessing can I give to you? Those who have highly educated don't know their future, so they are asking for blessing from a pig's head, which was cut for their future. The pig also didn't know its future, so it was killed. When we see what they are doing, it is so irritating to see. When I went to Mount Samgak to pray, some people were bowed down to a pig's head and rice cake. They also lit a candle in the daytime. The sunlight was brighter than candlelight. They were asking for blessing from the pig's head which had a candlelight on it. However, I looked at it. The pig's head and rice cake cannot give them blessing, but they ask for blessings from their gods with the pig's head and the rice cake. Dear congregation, which God receives the pig's head? Which God receives the rice cake? We don't serve that kind of God, but serve God who blesses us unconditionally. Please say Amen. God gave me everything for my flesh and killed His Son to save my soul. Please say Amen. Though we don't ask for blessings from the Lord, He says to us to believe in Him. I bless you to receive the blessings by faith. Come the fount of every blessing. Turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy. Never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some marjillious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Hallelujah. Korea has 500 years of Buddhism and 500 years of Confucianism history. The first president of South Korea, Sing Man Ri, founded the Republic of Korea on Christianity. In history, when has Korea been the richest? It is today when Christianity has been growing rapidly. South Korea has no industrial resources, no fish stocks, or natural resources. We have nothing, but we have one thing. It is faith which makes the Lord work. Faith, how great!
So South Korea became the 13th richest country in the world, 7th largest explorer in the world, rank 5th for spending money, 1st in church growth, and has dispatched the second largest number of missionaries all over the world. We are scheduled to be blessed. Come thou fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some medallious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount and fix upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. South Korea has active Christianity, early morning prayer meeting, Sunday evening services, home cell worship, Friday night prayer meetings, revival meetings, and special conferences. So God has blessed South Korea and we have become rich. If you understand, please say Yemen. Was there another country which was a beggar like South Korea? South Korea was in ashes after the Korean War. Did the gods, they ask for a blessing, bless Korea? No. The Lord answered our prayer for a blessing and gave us the blessing that Korea has become a rich country. We have met the good God who blesses us. Please say Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. When the holiday becomes, most South Koreans think that giving sacrifice to their ancestors is their duty. They think it is ethical and filial piety. They do it competitively. They were undutiful when their ancestors were alive. But when they passed away, they make sticky rice cake for them. However, they put sticky rice cake, cut apples and fish on the table. They never take a bite. They know that their ancestor don't eat it. Dear beloved, as children, we really want to be dutiful to our father and mother with all our hearts. I was one of them. But let us think about this. There is no other religion than Christianity which emphasizes duty to the parents. Those who are not dutiful to their parents should gouge out their eyes. Parents are worrying. Parents have devoted their lives for their children. However, they are not dutiful to their parents. So though they open their eyes, it is useless. Where will it be useful? It should be gouged out. Though they have received their parents' love, they don't know it. Those eyes should be gouged out. Also, those who are not dutiful to their parents should be stoned to death. How much have their conscience hardened that they are not dutiful to their parents? However, you are dutiful to your parents. You cannot reward what your parents have done for you. When someone dies, everything is useless. You should be dutiful while your parents are alive. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. 
How have your parents raised you up? It is beyond description. Parents don't want their children to be bad. They are devoted to their children. Parents are for their children to be well. So when the children listen to their parents, they will be well. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commitment with the promise. Why? Your parents have brought you up so you cannot help but honor them. The Lord commanded us to honor our father and mother. When I was living in the country, an elderly person in the village passed away then among the children. The one who had given many troubles to the parents was crying aloud in the funeral. He seemed to be the most dutiful to his parents. Why he had not been dutiful to his parents when they were alive? It made him so sad. When a person dies, that's the end. While your parents are alive, be dutiful to them. While they are alive, give them some pocket money, clothes, and comfort them. The most dutiful behavior is helping them to believe in Jesus to be saved and go to heaven. You set the table with rice cake and fish for your parents who have passed away and say, Father and mother, please receive this. Bowing down to them. You know that they don't come to eat it, don't you? You know they don't come to eat it. While they were alive, you never set the table like that. Then why are you doing it after they passed away? Dear beloved, if your father and mother have sent their lives to teach you, then what is the most dutiful behavior to them? You should obey and honor your parents and you should help your parents to believe in Jesus and go to heaven before they pass away. That's the most dutiful behavior to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen carefully. When a traditional holiday comes, why are we, as Christians, shaken by the worldly custom? We shouldn't do that. Yes, New Year's Day has come. I live by the grace of the Lord last year, and you gave me another year. Help me not to make mistakes. Let me live by your grace. Let me live by your blessing. He governed our life, dead curses and blessings, so we should focus only on Him. Rely on Him and start this year holding His hand. This is all we need to do. Do not focus on the things that are meaningless and focus on your life on the Lord only. I bless this in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you die, your body will return to dust. But once your soul believes in Jesus, you will go to heaven. And if you don't believe, you will go to hell. After that, you can't meet dead souls and communicate with them. You can have a relationship with the souls, but people hold a memorial right and insist their parents' soul come and eat the sacrifices. They determine to do so and they offer a sacrifice for their ancestors. They just want to believe their parents' souls come and eat the sacrifices, but actually the souls don't come and eat. This is the one of the doctrines affected by Confucianism. Don't be deceived by the man-made doctrine. Obey and follow the Word of God who created the Word and everything in it. When your parents are alive, serve them well. If you understand, please say Amen. After that, the dust can receive the sacrifices you offer. Dead souls that went to heaven or hell can accept the memorial rite. In Luke chapter 16, there were a rich man and a beggar. As time passed by, they all died. The rich man lived in luxury every day and lived for fulfilling his sinful desire when he was alive. By the wages of sin, he went to hell and suffered there forever. He was in agony, 
in the fire. Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Nazareth to dip and tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and commit all kinds of sins. Between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. What is the best blessing on earth? If all my family members repent from their sins before Jesus and their sins are forgiven, this is the best blessing. Hallelujah! The forgiveness of sin. I want you not to become those who focus on the worldly costume and commit sin. I want you to destroy your sin. I bless this in the name of the Lord. This is such a crucial thing to do. The beggar was so poor and sick, and even the dogs came and licked his sores. But after he died, he went to heaven and happily lived there forever. The day before yesterday, I thought, Lord, I wish you come soon. If I go to heaven, there is no crying, pain, suffering, death, and tears. I will be so happy there, Lord. I long for heaven. But when I see some church members who are not ready to go to heaven, I pray to God again, Lord, I wish you come a bit later because they are not ready yet. I want you to become those who are ready to go to heaven. When your soul leaves your body, the souls should go to heaven. Be saved by Jesus and your sins should be forgiven by the blood of Jesus. I want you to go to heaven led by the Spirit. I bless this in the name of the Lord. If you can do that, you're blessed. Dear congregation, do not be swayed by the traditional holidays like the worldly people. Dear congregation, the year of 2013 was passed. A part of your life disappeared. The year of 2014 is passing by. In 2014, I should pursue blessed life. I should live for my soul. I should live for the glory of the Lord. I should overcome the devil, sin, and curses. These are the things that we should do. The Bible says, No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both and the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than Him? How fearful! Dear congregation, I beg you to think of what demons do. In Matthew chapter 17, a man approached Jesus and said, My son was uh, possessed by demons. How often falls into the fire or into the water? Please heal him. This is what demons do. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, there was a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. When Jesus reached the region of Gerasenes, he met a demon-possessed man from town. He was chained, but he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demons into solitary places. This is what demons do. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2 says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been served as with a hot iron. Demons make you not to believe in Jesus and try to send you to hell. They shouldn't be served and should be driven out. So Jesus said, drive out demons in my name. Drive out demons. But people sacrifice to demons. If they do, their household will perish. The Bible says, if you worship idols, God curses them to the third and fourth generation. Dear congregation, demons can make you sin, sick, 
curse, die, and send you to hell. The devil, Satan, and demons have nothing to do with good. The nature of the devil, Satan, and demons are evil. But you prepare sacrifices to be offered to demons. And this means, demons, I bow down to you. They just think that they are serving their parents well, but their souls will be in heaven or hell. They will never come and eat the sacrifices if they really eat them. Why do you prepare for the sacrifices once or twice a year? You should prepare for them every breakfast, lunch, and dinner if they come and eat them. If you don't, their soul would die for hunger again. I want you to be alert. I want you not to worship demons and you should take care of your parents while they are alive. If they die, you cannot do anything. So you should be alert. After they die, you may cry or call their names or regret what you didn't do for them. But when they die, it is the end. Do not be swayed by Confucianism. Worship God along in His truth and be blessed. You should serve your parents well. And then everything may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. Your parents will be pleased with your serving. You should make your parents believe in Jesus and go to heaven. This is the blessing. Suppose your parents didn't believe in Jesus and then go to hell. How dreadful. How they can endure the life in hell. Dear congregation, we shouldn't make our parents live helplessly in hell. If your parents like money, you can say, let's go to church. If you go to church, I will give you one million won each time. So they go to church. Give me one million won as you promise. Write it down on a note. When I have enough money, I will give you right away. Why should we do like that? We should make our parents believe in Jesus and go to heaven. Sometimes when I go to a funeral, a church member tells me, Pastor, what should I do? My mom didn't believe in Jesus and passed away. I feel really sad when I think my mom has to live in hell so sad. So I told you many times, after your parents die, you can't do anything. You should serve them well when they are alive. You should make them believe in Jesus, be saved, and go to heaven. Please say Amen. This is the best way to serve your parents. You may visit your parents' house to participate in the memorial rite every traditional holiday and think that you are doing well for your parents, but you're wrong. Memorial rites actually calls demons into your household and demons make your household perish. You should be alert. Christianity never shares the same value with other religion or folk religion. Christianity pursues the truth, so it can't share its value with that of the world. Christianity exists within the ruling of God. If you accept the truth, please say Amen. Don't care what other people say. The truth will go on and never change. Dear beloved congregation, I beg you, no one visits their parents' house to participate in the memorial rite. The Bible says, if you serve and love God and keep the commandments of God, He will bless you to thousand generations. He will bless you to thousand generations. How exciting it is! No matter what happens, you should serve God only and become an ancestor who inherits the blessing of God to thousand generations. Your household shouldn't be controlled by demons that make you inherent curses to the third and fourth generations. Your household should be controlled by God. Dear congregation, if you worship demons, they will never leave your house. Think of this, when you believe in Jesus, your family member will say, You are the first daughter-in-law and wife of the first son of this house, but why don't you come to every memory of rights. Do you know why this happens? Evil spirits try to make you worship demons and curse you. But this isn't something that you should care about. Why? Just let the family members say as he or she wants. And then just pray for him or her. Lord, let all my family members believe in Jesus and be saved. 
Let us be blessed to thousand generations. The Lord said like that, so it will be done. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, the devil makes men sin, sick, cursed, died, and send us to hell. He never does something that generates sympathy or respect from us. He never does something loved by us or that we give thanks to. What the devil does is to make us perish both our body and soul. What's worse, we bow down to the devil. The devil should be beaten and driven out. So Jesus said, drive out demons in my name. If you acknowledge this, please say amen. Lord said that demons are the ones that should be driven out, not be served. If you acknowledge the truth and order of the Lord, please say Amen. Dear congregation, you may misunderstand and say, why does Pastor Yoon stop us from respecting our ancestors? I'm not the one who stops you from respecting your ancestors. The Bible says the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons. What the devil does is to make you demon-possessed, poor, sin, sick, cursed, abandon your faith, and sends you to hell. But if you worship him and let him control your household, your household will perish in the end. This shouldn't happen. If you serve God, who is the blessing, you will enjoy the blessing to thousand generations. This is from the Bible, not from me. If you acknowledge this, please say Amen. Dear congregation, what does the Bible say? Do not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. Do not eat the sacrifices offered to idols. Do not drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. 1 Corinthians says, Those who eat the sacrifices offered to idols will perish. We all should be alert and do not do what God says. Don't do and do what God says do. By doing so, I want you to enjoy the great blessing. I bless this in the name of the Lord. Lift up both of your hands. Lord, in this traditional holiday, let the blessing of God reach to thousand generations. Let the blessing reach to thousand generations from me. Pray for your parents and siblings who don't believe in Jesus. What is the best serving? If your parents are alive, you should take care of them and try to make them believe in Jesus and go to heaven. This is the best serving. If you really want to serve them well, you should serve them well while they are alive. When your parents are alive, you should give them chances to believe in Jesus, be saved, send money you gave, be happy because of clothes you bought for them. If you try to serve your parents well after they die, it's useless. You should serve your parents well while they are alive. Lord, let me serve my parents with all my heart while they are alive. Let my mother and father believe in Jesus and be saved. Let's cry out. Lord, three times when pray. Lord, Lord, Lord.